we are at the 5050 advocacy campaign and women's manifesto launch and they're very interesting conversations that we're having here our issues to do with uh, gender equality and the future of women's leadership in zimbabwe and with me here as the vice chairperson of the zimbabwe women parliamentary caucus honorable parina Mpaliwa, and the parliamentary the women parliamentary caucus other maybe say the authors of the manifesto and she's going to be explaining a bit more what it is about good afternoon honorable and welcome to the program yeah, thank you uh, my dear and uh, good afternoon zimbabwe i'm glad that uh, we are here in the time the day has come for the women of zimbabwe to work together united so that we come together in terms of uh, our political participation which will then bring uh, development in zimbabwe and uh, basically the manifesto covers a number of issues or a number of areas one is actually to align it speaks to the alignment of laws within the constitution because when you talk for example about health you are talking about issues of social services that also affect women when children are dying when women are dying during a giving birth it means therefore it's a social service issue if there was a woman minister maybe she could have done better in their office holders in terms of uh, social delivery we believe that women can actually do a wonderful job. We are talking about uh, issues to do with agriculture. How many women have benefited from it in the command of agriculture? How many women do have farms in their own names, not under their husband? If you talk about education, how many women have actually attempted to, to go to school at even various levels of uh, ages? And they have not been able to, to be accommodated the opportunity. You even talk about the girl child. How many girls have been uh, actually uh, uh, got out of school because the parents could not pay school fees? So we are looking at all these issues as a wholesome package with a gender lens that will assist in terms of uh, developing women, in terms of actually getting women to be equal to men in terms of both social, uh, political, and economic participation. Okay, now, Honorable, we've had a number of of these manifestos being launched, we have a number of uh, agencies that are advocating for women. And last year, the Ministry of Women also launched a national agenda policy. Now, how can an average uh, Zimbabwean woman make the most out of these policies? Uh, thank you very much. The gender policy, I'm glad that I was one also of the participants in terms of uh, getting the gender policy actually being launched by Zimbabwe. Because when you talk about the gender policy, you are also talking about every other. You are looking at all policies of the country with a gender lens and a wholesome package of laws that will also affect the lives of both the girl child and the women at large. And it's a sad that regional level, we have had gender policies. At the African Union level, we have had gender policies. Mm -hmm. So what it talks to is just to say the commitment of a country in terms of respecting the rights of women. But as a man says, we are saying, this is the truth. These are the whole structures in terms of now, how then do we do from, uh, from documentation to action? Okay. There you go, Miss Red. As a woman, you need to get hold of this manifesto.